my goal is for you to walk out of here being able to tell fact from fiction and truth from lies. How would that be? Let's try that again. How would that be? All right, cool. So I have spent most of the last 20 years reading people, uncovering secrets hidden in plain sight. I get asked to comment on uh, crimes and politics and billion dollar business deals. It is fascinating to me and I never run out of things to talk about. But for all of the big events that I end up in the middle of, this information has been most useful to me personally when I was dating. <laughs> you see, when I heard, hey, I had a great time, I'll call you next week, I never had to wait by the phone. And now that I'm married, it's even handier. <laughs> the other day, I came home from a, a three-day uh, speaking trip, and my husband, he knows, we have a rule at the house. The house is to be as clean or cleaner when I get home than when I, than when I leave, right? And he is a one-man tornado. I don't know what happens exactly while I'm gone, but it's stuff usually I don't approve of. So my hand's on the door, and he, oh, he opens the door. He greets me right there, and he says, I have spent the last five hours cleaning the house. And I looked at him in the eye, and I knew he was lying, and all I had to do to prove it was turn my head and look in the kitchen sink. So yeah, learning how to detect lies is really important. Lies can be hurtful and dangerous and very, very expensive. Now, I've been lucky enough to study right alongside some of our country's top law enforcement, FBI, uh, police, Green Berets. I've dialed it down for you here, and you're going to be blown away by how cool this is because it's all about the body language. Now, there's one thing you got to get. One thing you got to get. You lie every day. Every day you lie. And I can hear what some of you are saying in your mind saying, Tracy, I go to church. I would never lie. Yes, you. You lie every day. Now, not all these lies are big and fraudulent. A lot of them are little white lies just made to make people feel better. But how many of you have been, for example, to your 20-year high school reunion, you see an old acquaintance and you go, oh, it, well, you, you see him in your mind, you go, oh, man, they look like hell. And then you go, you know what? You haven't changed a bit. You ever do that? Yeah. Liar. You know, it makes people feel good. Lies don't always make people feel bad. Now, um, let's see. Here's another one you've probably uh, told someone. You say, oh, you know what? Sorry, my cell phone died. Did you ever tell anyone that? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. Now, I like to encourage my husband to cook, but sometimes uh, some of the things that, that come out of the kitchen are a little curious and... Uh, but I always go, honey, that was delicious, delicious. Mm. So, <laughs> well, we're coaching them along. We're coaching them along. Now, um, let's see. Anybody ever done this one? I know some of you have done it. So, oh, you know what? Tell them I'm in a meeting. Tell them I'm in a meeting. You've done that? Some of you are like, you're nodding a little bit bigger. Like, you do that a lot, don't you? Yeah. If anybody ever tells you I'm in a meeting, I'm probably out on the golf course, too. So, um, Let's see, I think we got uh, one more, or my skiers, do we have any skiers in here? Raise your hand, yeah, raise them high, be proud. Yeah, now um, I, I live in Boulder, Colorado, and, and I love to play hooky from work a little bit, and um, anybody ever called in sick on a powder day? Called in sick? Yeah, be proud, you're my people. Powder days are the best, but I'm lucky that the snow doesn't uh, melt right under my, under my skis, pants on fire style, right? So there's a lot of lies that, um, that you can tell. Now, everybody's done this one. Everybody's done this one. Yes, I have read and agreed to the terms and conditions on this <laughs> website, right? You've all done it, yeah, and you're all liars, right? Now, here's the thing. If any of you actually have read all the terms and conditions, we love you, but you might be a nerd. We need people like you around. Now, um, do, do, you want, do you want a free pass to lie? Anybody want a free pass? Come on, none of, none of you do? Some people, over, oh, some people behind the table over there do. They're like, yes, for sure. Okay, here's, Judson does too. All right, so here's, here's your free pass. If anybody asks you, do these jeans make my butt look big? The answer is no, save yourself, save yourself first. But here's the thing, if you're worried about actually telling a little fib, just look at the way the question's worded it might not have anything to do with the genes. I said it, yes I did, and this is where y'all laugh, because it's funny, okay. So, <laughs> so let's talk about uh, some of the skills that, that you wanna get. Here's the bottom line. There's a lot of different kinds of lies. 
there's uh, fabrications, exaggerations, minimizations, omissions, and deceptive denials, right? All of these are gonna look similar. This is why the police and, and FBI, they lean on body language so heavily, okay? They're gonna look similar, but there's, there's one more kind of lie. One more kind of lie. It, it just came out. You, you might have heard of it. It's about a year and a half old. Um, alternative facts, like brand new kind of lie. And so some of you are thinking, you're like, Tracy, nobody in my organization lies. Well, and our customers, they're the most truthful people. No, here's the deal. Buyers are liars. Got it? Will they really be back with their wife? Do they like your proposal? Um, you know, internally, employees lie too. What happened to that box of copper wire? Right, those kinds of things. I work with finance and banking a lot, and you wouldn't believe how many people lie to the bank about whether they ordered that Chia Pet off Amazon and it actually showed up to their house or not, right? So there's a lot of credit card disputes. All of these are different kind of lies that can impact your bottom line. So here's the basis. The basis of the whole thing. The body can't lie. Words can lie, but the body can't lie, okay? So when you see a discrepancy between the body language and the words, you gotta pay attention to it, okay? And so just, we know that uh, for Western people in America, this means yes, and this means no, okay? So when, when the words and the body language don't match, you got to believe the body language. Always take the words with a grain of salt, okay? And it looks really natural, and if you're not paying attention, you're not gonna see it. Right? So it looks something like this. So oh, I would never do that. Right? Or you could ask me anything. Right? Bill Clinton did this. On national TV. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Right? So, so these are the kind of things that you can start to see really quickly and take yourself out of any... Um, situations that you might be stressed about on TV because you're gonna be able to see the truth right away. And guess what? Those same skills can help you at home and at work as well. So um, I brought some videos. You wanted to, because it's one thing to talk about body language. I thought it'd be a little more fun to watch some things so we can see this in action. You wanna see some, some videos? Yeah, you do? Okay, good. So I gotta warn you, it's about to get hot in here. It's, people's pants are gonna burst into flames. And so from here on out, whenever we see flames on the screen, I'm gonna say liar, liar, you're gonna say, Okay, let's try it real time with some energy, like it's personal to you. These people are lying to you. Liar, liar. There you go. All right, good. So, um, does anybody watch The Bachelor? You watch The Bachelor? Yeah, the, okay, so you do. Uh, now, if you don't, or you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, I'm going to catch you up. So, this is Ben, and a couple years ago, Ben, uh, he, the drama, I don't know how we, we survived. The drama was just off the charts, because Ben was in love with two women. And he had to propose to one of them because that's always a good time to propose is on a tight TV deadline. And so, <laughs> and so Ben gets pinned down by Jojo. Just knowing what you know now, we're gonna determine if he's lying or not. Let me get out of the way here. Here we go. Like, I haven't asked you, or do you think that you're at a place with whoever that a proposal is what you would wanna do? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I see it, every time I see it, it gets me. So we got to call this and uh, call this one like we see it. Liar, liar. That's right. All right. So I, um, I got into reading body language from bike racing. You saw from the video, I had a really good bike racing career. And Lance Armstrong was one of the guys he was always around. I grew up here in Dallas. And it was to the point, everywhere I went, there he'd be causing a buzz. Now he's had some integrity problems lately, and <laughs> he was—he was, he was um, one of those guys that I—I uh, I owe a little bit of thanks to, though, for all the trouble that he's caused our sport with performance-enhancing drugs. I owe him a little bit of thanks for becoming a body language expert, because it was in trying to keep up with him and guys like him that I learned really quickly: cycling at the elite level is for little people. And this is what I have to drag around, all five, nine of me. And so I couldn't rely on my strength alone. I had to find some different ways to keep up and get ahead. And so I started to notice that if I paid attention to my competition, I could start to decode what they were gonna do and what was gonna happen next. And when I did that, when I watched their body language and looked for little things like the drop of a shoulder or the waggle of their hips, 
that's when I started to win. And it was, it was so um, vital to my success that I actually, I, I kept it a, a record of just about everybody that I raced with in the country who I thought I needed to keep my eye on. Because everybody will do the same thing over and over and over. It works in business and at home as well, not just on the road. And, and so a lot of times I would, uh, I would go on training rides, Lance would show up. I, I would jump in the men's pack and race right alongside him. And I got to tell you, he's fast. There's no doubt about that. But he's always one of those guys. He was one of those guys. You probably have these people in your life, the ones where you go, they're up to something. You don't know what it is, but you know it's no good. You have those people in your life. Like maybe you work with them. And maybe it's for sure your kids, like for sure. Yeah. And so what we want to do is, uh, well, we're going to unpack Lance a little bit. But um, you want to start to understand that if you have like that gut feeling, you need to pay attention to it, but you want to uh, use some empirical data to back that up so you know who's lying to you or not. So let's, let's see a little bit about Lance here. Um, just knowing what you know now, we're going to see three little clips, okay, three little clips, and um, you tell me how many lies you see. Ready? Here we go. I have never doped. I've never taken performance enhancing drugs. My best defense is I've never tested positive. How many said two? Raise your hand. Hi. If you said two? Yeah. How many said three? Nobody said three? A couple people said three? You want to see it again real quick? Okay, the answer's three. But here's the deal. This isn't always that cut and dry, okay? When you get out on the street, it's a lot harder to start to interpret. Okay? And so this yes and no thing that we've been talking about, the head nod, the head shake, it's really good for direct yes and no questions. When answers get a little bit longer, it gets a little more nebulous. It gets a little bit harder to detect. And so this last one that I want you to see uh, or really pay a lot of attention to, it's more of an up and down movement. Okay, So let me rewind it here. Oop. I like when they put a gate up right in the middle of the um, <laughs> stage. That's always good. OK, here we go. Watch the third one. I have never doped. I've never taken performance enhancing drugs. My best defense is I've never tested positive. There, did you see it? Yeah. When you know what to look for, it's right there, isn't it? Yeah. So um, you can start to look for this, can't you? But we got to call this one like we see it. Liar, liar. There you go. All right. So um, let's see. What do we got here? Um, in my longer presentations, we do analysis on a lot of different videos. And it's not about the current events that, uh, that we talk about, although those are interesting. It's about the skills that you can take home and apply in your own business, in your own life. Like, who killed John JonBenet Ramsey? Body language and also my interviews with the investigators uh, will reveal that. I will tell you who killed John JonBenet Ramsey when you hire me. OK, so, <laughs> so uh, did Lance lie to Oprah? We'll talk about that. Did, uh, what about Tom Brady? Deflategate, y'all remember that? Yeah. We have any Patriots fans in the house? Thank God we don't, because I got to tell you, I, I'm a Cowboys girl myself. Dak Prescott, bring it. That's, what I, that's who I want to go to the Super Bowl. But we'll talk about poor old Tom and all his lies with his Deflategate. So let's see. If um, Usually in my talks, when I have a little bit more time and we have a few more tools to work with, we'll play two truths and a lie. So it gets really interactive, just like you did when you were a kid. And people start to see these skills work in real life and real time. So they're going to walk out with an experience that's uh, more, I guess, complete, that they've had some action on than just theory. Now, um, if you want to know more, here's what you got to do. Um, I have a book. I wrote it. It's called How to Detect Lies, Fraud, and Identity Theft. It is usually $15. Today, it is sort of free. And when I say sort of free, it means you can't go back to the table and just get one. You have to come talk to me, OK? So it's the cost of a conversation. You can put Deb Fine's uh, small talk skills to use, and you will get a book on how to detect lies, fraud, and identity theft. Or you cannot talk to me and let people keep lying to you. That's up to you. So um, I got to go. I was going to read you some of my training journals from all those years ago. This book right here. Because some of you are probably asking me, you're saying, Tracy, there's just something I haven't answered. Tracy, when you raced against Lance Armstrong, who won? Aren't you curious? Some of you? Are you like very curious or just like not curious? 
Come on, y'all. All right, cool. So I was going to read it. Like I said, I'm out of time. The clock's actually at zero. So I'm just going to have to let you know um, it was me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Thanks, everybody.